Hello friends and welcome to Geology Concepts. Today we have an interesting topic for you. Suppose you are asked a question whose answer you do not know, then how do you respond? Well, you say I don't know. But what if I tell you that sometimes I don't know can be the correct answer. Strange right? Let's see how that is possible. This is a radioactive decay by emitting alpha particles. Now how these particles will decay if we have them in large number will depend upon this equation which is a first order kinetic reaction. If we look at the graph of this reaction, on the y axis we have number of undecayed nuclei and on the x axis we have time. The equation tells us exactly how the uh, radioactive nucleides will decay. Now the half life over here can be defined as the time required in which the initial number of atoms will be exactly halved. Okay, so that is half life. Now you can see over here half life doesn't depend upon the concentration, which means that if you take the initial concentration over here, after t half, you will get half the number of nuclei that you initially started with. What we see over here is that the half-life doesn't depend upon the initial concentration. So if I ask you the question, if I begin with 10 radioactive nuclei and if I look after half-life, how many of them will decay? Now an obvious answer that will occur to most of you will be that 5 of them will decay and 5 of them will remain undecayed. Now if I change the question, what will happen if I have only one radioactive nuclei? What will happen to it after half life? Will it decay or will it remain undecayed? Just think about it. So there are two possible scenarios over here. Either it will decay or it will remain undecayed. But how do we know which is the case? We will take a simple analogy. Let's say if you flip a coin, it will either land head or it may land tail. So there are two possible scenarios over here. It is either head or either it is tail. But can you tell whether it will land head or will it land tail? Well, for that you will have to do an experiment. Let's say if you flip a coin once and you note down the result. Okay, so you are getting head 0 and tail 1 because you flipped it once and you got tail. So now if you talk about the ratio of head is to tail percentage, you will get 0 is to 100. If you repeat this experiment 10 times, then let's say in that experiment you get 3 heads and 7 tail. So head is to tail ratio is 30 is to 70. If you repeat this experiment further with 100 coins, let's say you may get 56 and you may get 44. So the head is to tail ratio is 56 is to 44. Now if we keep on repeating these experiments with more number of coins, you will see over here that eventually as we go from 1000 coins to 10,000 coins to 1 lakh coins and even more, the head is to tail ratio will come out nearly 50-50. This is happening just because we are taking more number of coins and the coin is fair. So if we have a large number of coin tosses, 50% of them will be head as 50% will be tail. Now apply this logic to the radioactive nuclei we have over here. After half-life, there is 50% chance that it will decay and there is 50% chance that it will not decay. Okay. So if you have let's say 10 radio uh, radioactive nucleides, you cannot properly say whether only 10 will decay or none of them will decay or 5 of them will decay or 3 of them will decay. The correct answer is you don't know. Actually, nobody knows, nobody can say that this many number of atoms will decay because the process over here is random or stochastic. So if we have large number of atoms, yes, this equation will hold that after half life, the concentration or the initial amount will get halved. This is only true if you take large number of atoms. 